In this video, you will learn how you can configure and use the DocuSign custody transfer rule. It's probably one of the top three most complex features that make me want to bang my head against the wall when I first try to use it and understand it. Yet, you're not the only one. Don't feel special. So in this tutorial, I'm going to explain the different setting options and translate them into something that's easy to understand so that you can use it right away. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Sofian Saudi and I'm the founder of Solisan Consulting. Since 2019, we've helped hundreds of companies like yours automate documentary related tasks for their sales, recruitment, and onboarding workflows. So to automate documents, you need templates, databases, and integrations. And that's exactly what we build for our clients. So if you're tired of struggling with DocuSign alone, you can find the link in the description of this video to book a uh, consultation with one of our automation consultants. But if you prefer to do things on your own, I strongly suggest that you download our free DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet because it will help you understand how to use DocuSign the right way. Now, let's go back to understanding what DocuSign custody transfer is and how it works. A custody transfer rule automatically transfers the ownership of user's envelope to another user. So for example, if Bob is preparing the envelope on behalf of Sally and that Sally wants the envelopes to look like they're coming from her rather than from Bob, even though Bob is the actual person sending it, custody transfer rule will make that happen. But it's not just about changing the perception of who is sending the envelope. Custody transfer also helps give access to the envelope to the new user user of the envelope while those envelopes are in flight or after they are completed. And by the way, an in-flight envelope simply means that it's been sent, but it has not been completed yet. So for example, let's just say that I call insurance company XYZ to change my insurance premium and I talk to Stacy, their insurance rep. Stacy sends me my new contract through DocuSign, but after I receive it, I kind of, I just changed my mind because like I always do about everything and anything. And I want to go with another cheaper option. So when I call back the insurance to change my plan, I'm not going to be put through to Stacy, but I'm going to talk to another rep, John. And so normally John wouldn't be able to see the envelope that Stacy sent because he is not the sender. But thanks to the custody transfer rule, John is able to see the envelope because the custody transfer rule transferred all the envelopes sent from all insurance reps to a generic user that all reps can access. Let's just say sales at insurancecompanyxyz.com. This means that John can log in to DocuSign using his sales at at insurance xyz.com generic user profile, find the envelope and make changes to the contract and send it back to me so that I can sign it or just change my mind again. See how you can create the rule. So once you are logged in DocuSign, you wanna to go to the settings tab and then navigate to the custody transfer tab to the left. From the custody transfer page, just click on add rule. And so here, let's just say that my assistant, Faye, is preparing and sending contracts to our clients on my behalf. But I want to create the perception that the envelopes are coming from me rather than from her. So I'm gonna look into the from section of the page and I'm going to look for the user who I want to transfer the envelope to. Now let's say that my assistant, Faye, is preparing and sending contracts to our clients on my behalf. So I want to create the perception that the envelopes are coming from me and not from her. So I'm going to select my assistant here from the list of users and then I'm going to scroll down to the to section of the page. And so here I'm simply going to look for my name and select my email address. I want the next step is for me to tell DocuSign where I want my envelopes to be a landing for the new user, so for myself. So I want the envelopes to be going into my sent items. Now that this is selected, I have a few more options to take care of. And so this is what I'm going to explain now. By default, the transfer time is set to on send. And so this is what I want. I want the envelopes to be transferred to me after they've been sent. But I also need to make sure that I tick the box transfer prior to first send. Because if I don't tick this box, that means that the envelopes are going to be transferred to me after they were sent, which will defeat the purpose of me trying to make the envelopes to look as though they were coming from me in the first place. Not ticking this box would be useful if I was setting a different rule. For example, if I wanted to do the transfer the other way around from me to Faye, maybe I'm the one sending my own contracts to clients, but I'm going on leave for a few days and I want Faye to have access to my envelope so that she can manage them in case of one of my clients change their mind. How dare they? And if I selected transfer time on complete, this would transfer the envelopes to Faye after the envelopes has been signed by all parties. This wouldn't achieve the goal of changing the perception of who's sending the envelopes, but it would give access to completed envelopes to Faye so that she can be notified that the envelope has been signed so that she can kick off the next workflow. So that's not what I want to do here. I'm going to select on send and of course 
click on transfer prior to first send. Finally, if I want to tick the box add original owner as carbon copy, Faye will receive an email confirmation from DocuSign that the envelope has been sent after she sent it. This is pretty nice. Now let's talk about the things you want to consider before you use the custody transfer rule. You can turn on or off the custody transfer rule, but you can't edit it. You'll have to delete it or create a new one. And so because of this limitation, it's better to set up group based rule rather than setting up the rule at the individual user level. Let me explain. So for example, instead of setting up a rule that says that all the envelopes coming from Faye will be transferred to me, I'm going to say that I want the envelopes coming from the group assistant to be transferred for me. And I'm doing this because if Faye leaves our company, I can simply create and assign the new assistant to the assistant group inside of DocuSign, custody transfer rule all over again. And it doesn't matter that I've only got one person in this group, the workflow would still work because there's no minimum number of people that must be present in a group. Now, if you want to know how to customize your groups, just navigate to the groups tab and click on add group and then follow the prompts where you'll just be able to select which user need uh, to be assigned to that group. And a user can be part of multiple groups, by the way. Now, there are plenty more ways that you can use the custody transfer rule. And if you still find this confusing, you can schedule a consultation, DocuSign support consultation call with one of our DocuSign experts using the link just down below. We offer one-on-one -on -one training, templates, databases, and integration development to help you automate always more of your workflow. I will see you in the next video. Ciao.